The topic I'm going to talk about next is should when you're moving up, should you sell out, should you sell or rent your home? And you know, I, I'm I'm an advocate of both. I have sold my homes and I've rented them, and I think that it's a personal choice. If you have a strong personal attachment to the home, sometimes it's not a great idea to rent it. If it doesn't make good rent numbers, you know, you get into higher price ranges in Tampa, and it and it really starts to not make sense. You don't get a good enough return. Um, you know, if you're talking about a five hundred thousand dollar home, the likelihood of you making a good enough annual return on that property is slim. You should sell it and buy smaller homes and smaller properties and make a better return. Um, but ultimately some people like to keep the home. They want, they think it's going to keep growing in value. They like having rental properties or they have rental properties. So I want to go over uh, some tips, um, you know, and, and kind of talk to you uh, about some steps in this. You know, we've, we've ha uh, got a partnership with uh, Renters Warehouse. Uh, they'll be on the show uh, in a couple of weeks. And, um, you know, they're the landlord company that we recommend. So if you think about renting the property, you know, it's RentersWarehouse.com. Um, you know, they're a new company to Tampa Bay, but they're a humongous national property management company. They offer some amazing things. We're actually going to talk about um, one really cool thing that they do, kind of off topic, but is um, they will actually buy um, your problem. In other words, if you, are, uh, if you own a lot of properties and you're renting them out themselves, they'll actually advance you upfront money to take over the management of homes. It's really the most amazing thing I've ever seen for somebody that's thinking about hiring a property management company or even small property managers that just want to get out of the business. So we're going to talk a lot about that. So if you are a uh, rental property owner, uh, small landlord, uh, you know, rental property management, small company, uh, keep tuning into the show. In a couple of weeks, we'll talk more about that. But should you sell or rent your house? Um, you know, if you've got a lot of equity in it, then one benefit, the one nice part about selling it, if you've been in the home two out of the last five years and it's your primary, you can take that gain tax free. That's one of the nice benefits of it. If you convert it into a rental property uh, and you run, and you lose that two and, and you're and you don't live in it two out of the last five, so you rent it too long, you lose the ability to take the gain uh, capital, you know, gains tax free. And again, we're not accountants. Every person's what's well, a homestead property is different for everybody, but that's kind of a general rule of thumb. If you own a property uh, and you resided in your homestead two out of the last five, you get to take the gain, you know, capital gains free. You convert it to a rental and you keep it as a rental too long. When you go to sell it, you're going to pay gains on that money. So that's one of the benefits of selling it. Um, you know, the other benefit of selling it is not having to deal with being a landlord, not having to deal with the risk. You know, if if, it, if the payments missed, um, you know. Um, you know, I think also that the hassles of being a landlord sometimes are underestimated. It's not something people want to do. They don't want another job. They work Monday through Friday, and they kind of want to enjoy some time off. When you start becoming a landlord, you're basically giving yourself another another job. Um, I think financially, um, the the benefits of selling, um, you know, are, are better, especially from a profit perspective in a market where gains are, are rising um, for a lot of people. But the benefits of renting it, a lot of tax benefits. Um, you know, some of those tax benefits may be going away. Uh, there's a lot of debate right now over what's going to happen. Um, th there are also, um, you know, benefits of the, the return that you can get. Um, I think that's a, to me, that's a big determiner for whether or not you keep it as a rental. Is what kind of return can it get? Um, is it is it five percent? You know, six percent? The the bigger it is, you know, if you're talking a 10, 12 percent return, you may not be able to beat that in the market or with any kind of guarantee fund. With the tax benefits, maybe you do keep it as a rental. The more, the higher the price it is, the harder it is to keep as a rental. Um, you know, it, so the the other thing that comes into play though, um, appreciation. I've seen a lot of people keep rental properties based on appreciation, and that's a risk. If the property, you know, so their opinion of whether or not it's a good investment is the the val of the value going up. If the value stops going up, then they're losing money. So I'm not a big fan of of owning rental property for the basis of appreciation. I own it, and we own a lot of it. Um, but I own it for the purpose of, of you know, cap for, for ret annual returns based on the rent and the cash flow. Um, however, and this is something you can talk about, if you are turning it into a rental and you're going to go buy another home, uh, you got to be able to qualify for both. Right, yeah. You know, different loan types have different requirements as far as vacating a primary residence uh, and renting it to purchase a new home. Kind of the general rule of thumb, though, is to be able to afford essentially two mortgage payments. Uh, because if you can't offset the one that you're going to rent or if you don't rent it prior to leaving, you know, a lot of people intend to rent a home, but they close on their new home before they attempt to rent it out. Correct. So 
general rule of thumb, want to make sure that you qualify for both, both payments. mortgage payments. You've got to have enough income to qualify. One other caveat, what used to happen is people used to be able to count that income, the rental income, to offset the cost. Right. Um, but they stopped doing that for, I think you had to rent it for 12 months before you could start counting it as income. It had to be converted to a rental for a period. And every lender is different, but I know that's kind of a rule right. of thumb. Um, you know, so if you've owned rental property and you can show income on them, then that's acceptable. But if you're converting a property to a rental for the first time and it was your primary, there's a little bit more burden of proof in terms of income and qualification. And some of that is loan specific too. For you know, FHA, VA, conventional, they all have Are a different, different guidelines. Yeah. So, but that's kind of the, the rule of thumb, more or less, is you have to be prepared to, to have enough income to, to, right. to qualify. Uh, even if the property's not yet rented, because what was happening is people were drawing up fake leases, I and mean, oh, yeah. we had all kinds of scams going on right. back in the day where we'd look at stuff and be like, you know, yeah, okay, you rented it already, you know, all right, right. right. You know? it would so, be very easy to manipulate a lease agreement. Correct. So